You're listening to the NYC Taxi News Podcast. This is Abe. I'm here with Carolyn and Doward to talk about what's going on in the taxi business. We'll get into the latest of the medallion market, but first an update from Carolyn on what's been happening since our last podcast. So Carolyn, take over. Yes, a lot's been happening. Uh, congestion tolling was approved by the MTA board, which now includes former TLC commissioner, now Deputy Mayor Mirazoshi. She's called, she called for consideration of an exemption for yellow taxis um, from the new congestion fee of $1.25. Um, but then she voted for the plan anyway, even though that exemption is not included in the plan. And then she said, perhaps the New York State Legislature could revisit the second congestion fee from 2018 that was instituted in 2019, the 250, below 96 and 110, if necessary. <laughs> I don't know who's going to decide that. Uh, as usual, she makes no sense. By the way, Mira's been put in charge of delivery apps and has said that the app delivery companies have no front door in New York City government to have their concerns addressed. I suggest taking a look at the eLobby website to see how much time, money, and effort go into prying that door open. Um, okay, then there's the lawsuits. There's lots and lots and lots of lawsuits. There's still a number of lawsuits against congestion tolling, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, it could be struck down, it could be a delay, or maybe it will go through in June. Uh, who knows? The Taxi Workers Alliance lawsuit against the TLC regarding the street hail livery black pilot for an additional 2,500 cars was dismissed. So TLC can go ahead. There's already 700 of those cars on the road, so they might put the rest out there. Uh, NITWA plans to appeal. Um, Doe, in a statement, TLC Commissioner David Doe said he was pleased with the ruling. He said, we created this limited pilot program with direct input from drivers with the goal of reducing upfront costs for green cab licensees as well as increasing out of borough service, particularly for non-emergency medical trips. But see, then they're not really green cab licensees anymore because the cars can be any color except apple green or yellow. Um, and they can't do street hails anymore. But we still call them street hail livery. I don't know. It's very confusing. Uh, let's see what else. In light of the... I think it was 10,000 additional EV licenses recently issued. The TLC has decided not to issue any more EV FHV licenses for the time being, and that's key because they could create some more licenses the next time they take a look at it. So the sword of Damocles is still hanging over the entire industry. Uh, the lawsuit, Soybull versus TLC, that was a big one from two years ago that alleged fraud by TLC and inducing medallion buyers to purchase medallions and the TLC's false reporting of medallion prices, which had been dismissed, is going to be reconsidered by the judge. It was dismissed a year ago. Uh, the lawyer, John Norensberg, I forget the name of the other lawyer who's involved, uh, made a motion for the judge to reconsider. I think she had dismissed it because it was time barred, but she rethought that and said, no, you're not time barred. So she's going to reconsider. Uh, but it's only going to involve people who bought medallions in 2013 and 14. Nobody else. Um, okay, one, one last one. There's an ongoing lawsuit by the disability advocates against the TLC uh, regarding TLC's failure to produce 50% taxi accessibility. Presently, 42% of currently licensed and able to work, 9,000 taxis are accessible. So 42% of 9,000. TLC wants to be relieved of the settlement they made 10 years ago on the wheelchair accessibility. But if it's your turn to be away, you still have to do it. You're not off the hook. Um, one interesting thing about this lawsuit, the New York City Law Department is defending Tax and Limousine Commission in this lawsuit. And in one part of one of their responses, they said the following. This is TLC speaking through the New York City Law Department. Because the total number of taxis in service at any given point in time has continued to fluctuate the past few years and has not shown signs of market improvement, 
defendants, TLC, no longer believe it can meet the goal of requiring more private medallion owners to continue to provide taxi service, accessible or otherwise. This is not exactly confidence building in medallions, um, but I guess we'll get into that a little bit later. There's also a number of unresolved lawsuits by TLC employees against the previous commissioner, Aloysi Aredia Jarmashuk. So we're keep, we'll keep an eye on that. And 10 dispatchers at JFK have been charged with taking bribes from cabbies, which to me is probably providing opportunities for the next crew who will take their place, but maybe I'm too cynical. Um, so I guess now we're going to talk about the medallion market, just for a little background. There's 119,000 licensed taxi and limousine commission vehicles. Just wrap your head around that. 180,000. Uh, let me just finish, Abe. 180,000 yeah, drivers. Yeah, only yeah. 772,000 trips a day in January 24. So that's six trips a day per vehicle. There's been 3,000 foreclosures since 2014. And there's presently around 30 foreclosures a month. Utilization rates by Uber and Lyft are abysmal and falling fast, like 50% on Uber's part, 45% on Lyft's part, uh, almost 49% industry-wide in the high-volume fire service industry. Um, so that's, that's the backdrop. That's the background, guys. <laughs> so what should we get into first? First, I want to I want to I want to uh, Dowd wanted to know about these um, the uh, dispatching at JFK Airport, okay, and how it works. But you know, I just want to say this. Uh, I read the article about that uh, two days ago. Uh, totally unaware of what was going on, and um, it seems that the, you know you know the old saying: uh, those who don't know history are, are bound to uh, repeat it. Uh, yeah. Nineteen nineteen ninety two. Thirteen thirteen uh uh inspectors at the uh inspection site in Queens, okay, were arrested for taking bribes from taxi drivers. Okay, and, and I imagine a couple of the taxi drivers uh, got into trouble also. I don't remember it all the way it worked. But but thirteen was scored you know it's taken out of the building in handcuffs, 13 mm -hmm. of those inspectors. And I remember thinking to myself then, well, I guess they deserved it, you know, because, you know, they, 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 they you know, where, where, where there can be corruption, there is corruption. Okay. And here's another case, 13 years ago, maybe nobody remembered that or was around then. Okay. And all of a sudden, oh, Oh, they were taking bribes at JFK Airport uh, to give these guys, uh, you know, right away. You know, nobody wants to wait three hours for a fare. So, yeah, here, here's 10 bucks. Get me in there. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, who 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 approached who? Probably, you You know, I mean, I as a taxi driver would never in my world, never ever do, you know, uh, take it, take uh you know, and an, uh, an, an invitation to get into something like that. Okay, uh, so uh, you know, I guess the, you know it, it takes two to tango. Uh, the, you know, the driver that said okay, and the and the uh, inspect the not the inspector, the dispatcher that that said, listen, you want to get you want to get out of here, give me ten bucks, whatever. And it's this went into thousands of dollars. And uh, let's see where this leads. You know, actually, I mean, it wasn't it's, really it's, that much money. I was not impressed by the amount of money this time. But you know, of course, it's illegal. That's true. The the, the Russian hacking incident seemed to be much yeah. more lucrative. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think it was like ten thousand dollars a day. I actually had a guy um, email me who seems very knowledgeable. He said uh, he said uh, I don't want my name, but I'll read his idea. It's a very short idea. He's, he's like, uh, he, he suggested this. He said, have someone in the Port Authority pay a visit to Las Vegas Airport and observe the way they could load taxis at the terminal. They have about 20 numbered spaces for taxis at the curb. Direct passengers to line up at those spaces. And the cabs quickly arrive in groups of 10 to 20. Build open spaces, pick up their passengers, get on the way. It's not rocket science, and the same could be, uh, happen in NYC airports. And then he concludes, 
paid the dispatch people, all of them, a base rate and then a substantial incentive rate based on the average wait times for passengers. They would actually care how efficiently the loading of passengers was done and the long rates in a central dispatch would be dramatically reduced because many more cabs would be going through the pickup areas if wait times were reduced. If that were done, the need to pay a spiff to jump the line would be material relu materially reduced. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, there's a lot of things we could do in New York but we, to make things run more smoothly, but we never do. <laughs> it's always the problem. Well, what I, what I not rocket really science. Uh, He's right. It, yeah, and it, it, it's, it's like such a common sense. And I guess, yes, you know, of course, uh, to Abe's point that, okay, someone's going to bribe someone to skip any line. You know, I think there was like an app recently where people would hire people to stand in line for them at the DMV well, and then, yeah, look, you know, look when at, it approached. Look at, what about global entry? You know, where people who are willing to pay more money when they get a new passport can, you know, breeze through the airport. If you want your passport faster, you pay more money, and it's supposedly it goes express. Um, I don't actually think that works. I just renewed mine, and I did it the old-fashioned way, just mailing it to the post office with a stamp on the envelope. I got a new but passport fair, But to be weeks. fair, you're in, in that in that instance, I think with global entry, you're giving up a lot of biometric information. You're staying yeah, oh, in yeah. interview. Yeah. So you're, yeah. that's, it, you know, I feel like that's a little more of a fair thing where basically I, you're saying like, okay, if you're an American citizen and you, you know, your eyes have been scanned and you've been fingerprinted, you've been interviewed, <laughs> you might not have, every time you come back to America, you might not have to answer like, you know, where were you born and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, I know, I know um, a surgeon who tried to get one. And because he had washed his hands so much in his career as a surgeon, his fingerprints were very faint, and they wouldn't give him the global entry. They gave him a hard time. <laughs> well, yeah, let me, let me ask mean, you a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, um, uh, I see somewhere mentioned uh, uh, at JFK, and, and I, I, I don't know how to pronounce this word, Q-U-E-U-I-N-G. Q. It's pronounced like, like a pool Q. Yeah. It's oh, a very British. The Q, they use that term in England a lot. Q is a okay. line synonym. For what line. what is this then? What is this Q system? It's that that's the oh. central holding lot. That's the, a Q is just another word for a line. Like however the central dispatching, like basically if you're waiting in a queue. So if you're waiting in the parking lot, another way to say that if you're like from England would be I'm waiting in the queue versus I'm waiting in the parking lot in the central dispatch. Yeah. Uh, the, the, well, issues well, at, look, the issue at LaGuardia is once you're on the queue in front of the terminals, I think there's two lines. You cannot get off that line. You're penned in like cattle on the way to the slaughterhouse. You cannot leave for any reason. So I'm, I've been hearing some complaints about that. That's been happening since the renovations were finished. And the other issue at LaGuardia is, remember how in olden times, and I think it was four years ago, you, you, if you, you know, waited to get a trip for two hours and then they sent you, say, to Astoria, which is a very short trip, you could come back to the airport, I think it was within two hours, and you would get on a special line where you would be dispatched much quicker. Um, and they took that system away, and there are drivers who feel that that's very unfair. I mean, once you've waited for two hours and you get, you know, not such a good trip, if you come back, you know, you want to be given preference, and they don't do that anymore, no, and that's let me very ask you, unfair. That's actually really yeah. interesting. Let me ask both of you this. Like, you know, and Abe, you mentioned this initially, and I wrote about this in an article about this thing, that, okay, there's going to be, like you said, you know, pay me 10 bucks under the table, I get into the club type of thing, you know, I skip the yeah, line. Yeah, right. But there's another side to that where the, the obviously it takes two to tango, sometimes it takes three to tango, but let's say in this instance it takes two to tango, and how responsible is the driver who's giving the, who's paying the bribe? Should there be some consequences for that person? I think it said in the article that there are going to be consequences for the drivers. But, you know, it's well, not it should be, drivers it, being escorted. Yeah. <laughs> Look, if a, if a dispatcher came over to me and said, listen, give me 10 bucks and I'll get you, get you, uh, I'll get you out of here and, and you have a, the next fare, I, I would look at him and say, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, well, you're decent. You're, I think you know, your 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 sense, uh, your moral compass might not be what is 
reflective of others. Or, 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 or if I was a dispatcher and a, and a taxi driver approached me and said, listen, I'll give you 10 bucks if you get me out of here, I would look at him and say, you must be kidding me. You know, because... Um, but then an, uh, you know, I'll put it this way. Uh, 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 the bribery scheme cannot work unless the driver bites. You know that, that like yeah, no right. Matter, r- r- right. Well, how do they find? How do they find each other? You know, and how did they get caught? Probably some of the drivers did ratted them, ratted them out. You know, they had to. You know, I yeah. mean the. You know, I mean if I was so, a driver, for, yeah. Look, look, look I, I don't believe in ratting anybody out for anything because I like living. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but because rats, we read whether we're, whether they're right or wrong, in many cases uh, get murdered. Okay, you know, just the way it is in this world. Okay, but um, uh, how does it start? How does it start? You know, uh, who who's approaching who, and 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 I guess you know once somebody finds out that they can do that, then they might approach. The dispatcher that's uh, t- taking the money. Okay. So uh, to to answer your question in terms of how to, per, you know, you said in '92 it happened, and I, and I agree. Like, is this always perpetually going to happen? There might have to, and I think Doe did mention this. If a if a TLC licensed driver is is not respecting the rules, then to make an example of you know two or three drivers saying, listen. You uh, you did this. You were caught. You you no longer have the privilege of being a TLC licensed driver. I think it would straighten a lot of people out. Yeah, I I, I believe that you know they, they should lose their license and that and that and that be be um, or at least just just have the thought of knowing that they're going to lose their license and 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 not have it reinstated at any because, time. Because the only thing okay. with this is that in, yeah. this, in this crime, we're talking about one side of the crime and the dispatch people obviously, especially if they're subcontractors and all of that stuff, they're guilty. But we're almost holding one, it's almost like the accessory to a murder. You know, like, okay, someone commits, executes the murder, but then like if someone gave... If someone was involved in a crime, they they can't be there can't be no punishment. Otherwise, they don't think, think that well they'll do it for the next crew. As to I think point. it also depends on how greedy the um, dispatchers are. I mean, if you you could get into a situation mm-hmm. where you can't get out of that holding lot unless you pay something to those guys. I mean, it could get to that point. I don't think we're at that point, but I think this will probably all be solved by artificial intelligence and just have the whole thing computer dispatched and everybody has tags and are scanned and they know the the computer knows where everybody is and how long they've been there and where to send them and where the passengers are. I think that, you know this would be one case where it would be a better solution yeah, to not have that's any a great involved idea. involved that's at all. That's a great idea. That's but a yeah, great yeah, idea. Basically get, what, probably get, what Uber and uh, Uber and, and Lyft do. I'll just yeah. add one other thing to this, where um, in the black car industry, I remember when I first started out, you know, people are. I knew some black car bases, so there was this one black car base that said this has to do with this. It relates to airport queues, airport lines, where they signed up for this black car base. They paid for the radio rights. They paid for the tablet, and then a lot of these drivers called me. They're like, "Listen, these guys are uh, treating me unfairly." I'm like, "What do you mean? Like uh, the number? I'm in the airport line, and my number six, and then all of a sudden my number goes to seven. And then I called them, and I said, "Guys, like, what's going on? They've showed me the evidence. They're like, "Oh no, no, no! When a veteran driver of I, uh, ours pulls up." we automatically accelerate them to the front of the line. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's the worst mm-hmm. system. That's, that's a yeah. very unfair system, you know? Yeah. So people have let, this mentality of skipping lines, which is not good. Let, let me, let me say just, something. You know what? It's, okay. it's human nature. Well, I'll just say one thing. Let, Thomas Jefferson, I think, said, if, if men were angels, we wouldn't need any laws. Okay? So, you know, right. you need to have... Let, let me say something. Way. Let me say something. That's a, gra- a, a great idea that there'd be no dispatches but artificial intelligence to yeah. tell the the uh, drivers to, uh, you, you're next, you're next, you're next. However, however, that brings us to the thought, and recently it's, 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 it's going to happen in New York, uh, the vehicle with no driver. Well, 
I have my uh, I have my We're thoughts on this. You know, I I, well, I have I wrote a, I, I wrote a very long article about this, so, and I think with driverless vehicles and you know all of this stuff, I think there's an element of um, it's one of those things where it's like the Wright brother. I don't know. I'm just I'm probably not, not getting the dates right from the Wrights brothers, let's say, Kitty Hawk test to when mm-hmm. people were in Boeings, right? I'm sure decades passed, you know? And even with the, yeah. even with the car, with the horse and but I'm sure the first car was in the 1880s or 1890s, you know, Daimler, I think, yeah. or something in that. And then it didn't get really ubiquitous till the Model T, I think, you know, when it was cheaper mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. I think, yeah. I think... You know, I think there's positives to driverless cars. I think there's... Uh, downsides in terms of uh, the impact on employment because people just think about the driver being impacted. Think about all the ancillary services <laughs> related to driving a car and how let, many those p- industries employ. L- listen, let me say this. There are already driverless cars in San Francisco and other parts of California. Okay? All well, right. I think that's so, pretty, so, that's so, pretty, so, hold on. Yeah, what are you saying? So, my thoughts when I when I started to read about mm-hmm. this is, how long will it take before they come to New York? Okay, because you know that you know the, the, these aren't driverless cars for for uh, private passengers. These are bri- driverless cars for taxi cabs. Well, okay? all driverless so cars how, are basically taxi cabs in a way. Yeah, but uh, but I might, but 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 you might own a driverless car, okay? I'm talking about you know keep picking up people on the streets, you know, with the with the you know they they, they get a they get a cell phone, you know, and and ask for a taxi, but you, but, and the but, driverless but and I, the driverless yeah. car shows up, okay? And and why why are they permitting them to even test it in New York if they don't have the the long term range of thinking? We're gonna we're gonna get rid of the driver, okay? Let me. This let, is what they me, This me, is what they're doing. Let Go me ahead. frame it like this: If we if we yeah. play this out, driverless cars, right? What is a yeah. subway? If you think about a subway, a subway this, is a, a, a basically a, a ton. It still has a driver to be in a. It's not a driverless car. Automated. A subway. There's there's a guy in the front car, driving driving no, no, but, the subway. But, I'm, but, I'm, but what I'm saying is effectively. <laughs> It's a transport system that can, uh, it's not door to door, but basically uh, the end state of driverless transport, right? Would, it'd be just like an overground, like you'd have a dedicated bus lane that only a driverless car can, uh, can go on. I think as it, in terms of New York City, in terms of allowing the testing, I think sometimes they test the driverless systems, n- number one, because, um, I think if people think about this as like uh, like it's either driver either a guy has no ability to drive or you uh, I'll give you a perfect example like lane changing systems right so you can make a driver safer but develop technology that you know automatic brakes or prevents someone from cutting someone off because it's in a blind spot so I think there's this technology I think it's coming and I think you know you have to be honest like you know 40 50 whatever the thousand people die in accidents every year across the nation but I think we also shouldn't overhype something you know where I think they're testing it out to see is this even possible um, you know, can this work? But it's not too dissimilar from imagine in the early 1900s or 1910s when the horse and buggy was around, and then they say, they saw the car coming, and they're like, oh my God, well these cars are crazy. You can depend on the horse. A horse will stop. It's not as heavy. You know, there's these type of arguments. Look, look the 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 uh, the ultimate goal of the people that run these driverless cars is getting rid of the drivers so that they can keep all the money. Okay. Now, you know, that's it. And, and as far as a subway goes, a subway can have uh, driverless, uh, 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 you know, uh, trains. Okay. Because it's, they're on tracks. Okay. They're not going to go off the track. And, and I, I'd, I'd like to say they're not going to hit anybody, but not lately. Okay, because uh, well, the, 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 new, the, new, the new crime it, is it, throw people it's on one the track. Person, it was always one person a week 
for years and years and years, decades, about 52 people a year die as a result of being hit by a subway. And I think it's probably gone well, up and, now, and, but and, it, 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 always, it was always I, happening. When I lived in London, they had a very simple, uh, obviously it still happens in London, but they had a very simple thing. Like in a lot of the tube stops, what they call in London, they have these glass barriers, permanent glass barriers. And when the train mm -hmm. lines up with the platform, the glass door opens and the train door opens. And in those right. stations, basically, it's impossible to, you know, uh, jump on the tracks. But uh, honestly, you know, some of those, I don't know what the percentage is, some of those people are obviously in a mental condition where they're effectively uh, trying to, you know, uh, uh, commit suicide, basically. So, you know, sometimes that's not the subway's fault. And other times it's about crime and people pushing people onto the tracks. Um, and so there's a way to prevent that. But getting back to the, the driverless uh, car talk is, is that um, I think, A, to your point, yes, Uber and Lyft undoubtedly are th – that's one angle that if we get rid of the driver, we can make more money because then we can – you know, operate a fleet of driverless cars. But there's another angle to this. They're assuming that they own the licensing regime, right? And so one thing that I mention in my angle is imagine every taxi medallion, let's say if someone owns a taxi medallion and that gives you the right to operate a driverless car in New York City, then, okay, the taxi driver is losing his job, let's say 10 years from now, but then he has this, he has this right to operate a driverless car, which probably offsets or more than offsets the loss of a job. Yeah, but it's just going yeah, to there more actually likely. was a bill there was a there was a bill in the New York City Council that would have given medallion owners preference to um okay. have this new type of license for autonomous vehicles, but it, I don't think it, that bill more, ever went more, anywhere. It's more likely it's more likely that these cars are going to be run by corporations. Okay. All right, they, that's it. You know, that would be a huge the, extra expense for them because corporations don't own any of these cars now. For the that, I clearly put it onto the, the drivers. Uh, I, exactly. I think the corporation uh -huh. actually prefer a driver to own the car or a smaller business yeah. to own the car. Okay. All right. Listen. Listen. Let me. Let me. Let me just jump in here and and say this. Um, uh, I want to cut. I, I'd like to cut this conversation off right now and get to the part that we wanted to talk about, which was the value of taxi medallions. Instead of it, yeah, well, okay, well, I'm um, go ahead, okay, Carolyn. Do you want to go start? Ahead, or you want me to start? Yeah. Well, we, we, I think we were all wondering about the MRP loans. Um, you know, that's the a good place to start. Loans, actually, that, that's a good place to start. And how how yeah. are they doing? Um, I think. What did David Doe testify? I think there's about twenty two, twenty three hundred medallions that were refinanced and this helped between eighteen and nineteen hundred people who owned these medallions. Um I think the amount in um that was written off from the old loans was about four hundred and fifty million dollars if I remember That's right. correctly. And according to the TLC, about 20% of the refinance loans have defaulted. And how that works, I think my understanding is, is that the TLC, New York City, would continue to make payments on those loans until they can sell that loan off to somebody or some other entity. Um, so that's what's been happening with that. I don't, that's assuming you could sell it to somebody. I don't know. Do you think you could sell it to somebody in Hollywood? <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think that's a really good summary. That's a, the numbers are exactly right. So if we think about the medallion market, I know there's, it's, it's. I think the way to view this market is you first have to track if you have drivers then the medallions are going to get on the road. So right now we see a trend just for, I know Abe and Carolyn, you know the numbers, but let's say a year ago when we were speaking, I think there were 7,500 or 7, something like that on the road. Right. Now there's 9,000. Mm -hmm. uh, from on the ground insight, I actually recently helped someone who wanted to know about medallions. Um, and I may have mentioned this in another podcast. His dad was a yellow cab driver, was retired, was going crazy at home. And so then he started to see, he's like, oh, how much is a medallion? And I think he bought one at around $100,000, $102,000 
500 is the exact number. This is about two months ago. And he bought a mini mm -hmm. fleet. So multiply that by two, let's say. So let's say 200,000, 205,000. And he mm -hmm. bought it. And so I said, how's it going? The deal recently closed. And so he said, well, the dad's driving one car. And he's like, could you help me find a driver for the other car? I'm like, okay, we can advertise. I can ask around. I know a lot of, a fair amount of people. Three days later, he's like, oh, I, my dad just asked his friends and we, I already got two drivers for the cars. Oh, that's you know, good. so... I'm like, okay, interesting. You know, this is all like kind of, you know, subjective type of I heard it all, you know, through the grapevine. Another example, I was in a, I actually take a fair amount of yellow cabs. I take Uber and yellow cabs, but I do actually take a fair amount of yellow cabs. I was talking to this gentleman. I was going from the Upper East Side to uh, the West Side, and it was like a young guy, and I always talk about the medallion and how's his business and everything. I'm one of those guys. And so it was like a guy, he was probably, from, he was an immigrant from West Africa. He was probably in his 20s, I want to say. And I'm like, so it's interesting. I said, I don't usually see young guys like you drive the yellow cab. Do you like it? He's like, I love it. He said, I used to do Uber and Lyft, but I don't like that system. I like this system better. He's like, I actually bought the medallion. And I'm like, oh, okay. He's wow. like, me and some of my friends from my community, actually it's like seven or eight of us drive yellow cabs and a few of us have bought the yellow cabs and we want to save money to buy uh, a couple of more medallions. A third thing is the Bangladeshi community um, because a lot of the, you know, because they're kind of different immigrant waves that kind of hit the for hire vehicle industry yeah. and then, even yeah. niche down into the like yellow cab industry. So in the nineties, it was like a lot of Pakistanis and uh, Sikhs, uh, like uh, Indians. And now it seems to be uh, um, Bangladeshis and a lot of West Africans who are kind of getting into mm -hmm. the um, yellow cab industry. And I'm understanding, and this is a great find, a lot of individual like. Bangladeshi, because they have communities, so they kind of group fund because there's no bank, you know, mm -hmm. there's no banking. That's an yeah, issue yeah. with yeah. the medallion industry. So yeah. they're making their own effectively community like uh, funds. They are buying the medallions and they are driving them. And so there's, I think, a bottom seems, to, you know, very fam famous last words, we're at a bottom, right? But I'm seeing, I'm now observing it that you have like these incremental drivers, the data is also showing it. We're past 9,000 medallions. And remember, you just have, there's only 4,000 more medallions to get on the road and then we're done. You know, then, yeah. then there's no more medallions to get on the road. So I think there is a pathway for the medallion to recover. Now you obviously have to layer on one other thing and then I'll, and then I'll let other people comment, is that Uber, this is something that people don't appreciate. That yes, adding 11,000 cars was not a good idea and we've gone over that over and over again that it just it's mind-boggling how that concept but anyways getting past that uber and lyft have a waiting list now and the waiting list is growing and growing and growing i think right now it's four to five months so basically if you're let's say you're fresh to new york city as so many uh, people are you want to try a new job especially if the economy is kind of softening in certain parts you're like, okay, if you can't get onto Uber and Lyft, you're going to try to drive a yellow cab if you're not trying to do illegal street hails. But let's say there's a fair contingent that wants to be legitimate. So then they're going to the yellow cab industry. And Uber and Lyft having a wait list should benefit the yellow cab industry. Um, so there's all these dynamics going on. But most importantly, I think if a, if a driver can make more money driving a yellow cab, I think economics will dictate more people will go to the industry. So I think there's a recovery going on. I don't know how long it'll be. You obviously have Marblegate stock listing in the background, and they're a major player and all of that stuff. So I'll stop there. I can talk for on and on about this, but what do you make of what I said or what are you guys are observing? Um, I, I just want to say a couple of things about this. Thank God for immigrants <laughs> to New York City, um, I'm, you know, Maybe we have a few too many, you know, like 190,000, but, you know, it's good that we have immigrants and that they want to buy medallions and they want to drive yellow cabs. Also, when you're an immigrant, you're a particular kind of person. Maybe you don't really like to fit into a system like Uber and Lyft, because every study that I've ever seen about job satisfaction indicates that money is not the number one thing, nor is status. It's autonomy. 
That's what people like about their jobs. Where do you have more autonomy if you're going to drive and pick up passengers? Uber or driving a yellow cab? Of course it's driving a yellow cab. So I think immigrants would be particularly attracted to that rather than just being a cog in the, you know, the works with, with Uber. How, how, do you, how do you define autonomy in, in this case? You pick up, you know, you drive around, you, where you want to drive, when you want to drive, how you want to drive, you pick up. No one can well, say that, who you want to pick up, well, but, you know, well, well, yeah. you well, want to go okay, to the airport and sit there for two hours, you do that. You don't want to do that, you work the streets. You want to work okay, with you, right. you, know, you I, do I understand. You want. Nobody understands that as well as I do. Okay, but Right, I know question, you do. So, yeah, so, but the, so the question is, the question is, uh, the, why can't, why can't the Uber cars, you know, do that? What's keeping keeping them from doing the same thing? Because you're part of the algorithm when you're working for Uber. You know, you just you're part of that system and you can't get out. I'll yeah. give you real life okay. examples of uh, that's that. If I was in the yellow cab industry and I was kind of all in on that and that was my business, you have to pitch to a driver. There's two things that they have to explain. One is that people are kind of afraid, like especially the newer contingent of drivers, they're afraid of the street hailing concept. They don't like that concept that, okay, I got to pick up a guy from the street and now who the hell knows where I'm going, right? That's kind of uncomfortable to some people right, uh, because of the e hail That's a disruption that a lot of people don't talk about, where they're like, I don't want to pick people up, like, from the street and not know where I'm going to go type of thing or get, have to get involved with payment. Hey, that, ne- that, never, that never bothered me. You know, it bothers, it bothers some people, but that never bothered me because when I was working, I wanted to go wherever they wanted to go, okay? Okay, and... Well, I'll, and, put, it, um, I'll, I'll put it this way. You if know, there, there, yeah. There, I don't. I want you to speak a lot about this because I think people actually yeah. want to hear from people like you, Abe. But just yeah. to really quickly interject, and then I'll let you continue. You just need twenty six thousand people of that mentality, and that's it. The rest can do something. Do you know what I'm saying? You just need thirteen thousand five hundred eighty seven medallion there's, there's, times there's, two. There's always going to be people that don't want to go where where you want to go, no matter whether you're in a yellow cab or an Uber car or whatever. Okay, but but my 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 policy was just keep going where they want to go. You're making money. Okay, and and don't worry about oh that's a bad neighborhood because uh, crime can happen anywhere. So you got you have to you have to be yeah um, you, you have to be brave, okay. But don't you know don't worry about where you're going because you're going to get paid, okay. I don't know how to say how else to express it, okay. You know, and is congestion pricing, uh, you know, if it ever comes around, we're still waiting to see what's going to happen. Is that going to be good for the drivers? Uh, you know, because, you know, the the, the biggest um, thing that drivers used to do is if it was five o'clock in the afternoon, say, and, and, the, and the city was jammed with cars, okay, that somebody should take them somewhere where they, where they can't get a fare back, okay? Because, you know, we're, 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 look, I've gone, say, at two o'clock in the morning, Right. I used to work. I've worked every hour you can imagine. OK. OK. So at two o'clock in the morning, somebody gets in my car in midtown Manhattan and, and wants to go to um, uh, way out in Queens, say, you know, I forget the name of the town says um, whatever. OK. A- a- and at two o'clock in the morning, you can make that trip there. OK. In uh, 45 minutes. Right. And and. Uh, and not even worry about getting back, you know, because you could you could uh, drive down. I, I would say go out to, to Jamaica Avenue, okay, in Queens, say from Midtown Manhattan. I would I would take instead of instead of running back to the city on the LIE, I would get on Queens Boulevard and hope I'd pick somebody up. And many times I did, okay. But at five o'clock in the afternoon, you don't want to do it because chances are. You're going to be stuck out there, and and it'll, that 45 minute ride it will turn into a, a three hour uh, um, no making money or just making one one fare. Okay, so 
look, it's it, it's up to the way you work, the way the way you think. All right. Well, let me, but now, let me now with congestion yeah. pricing, wait a minute. Now with congestion pricing, they may be able to do these trips a lot quicker. Go ahead, talk now. Okay. I was just going to say, actually, I wanted to get Carolyn's take on this because Carolyn, I know you know people close with you that dro- drove the yellow cab. Did they? enjoy the just to understand the mentality because something that you need i i can tell you about today but i can't tell you about what made it so attractive in the 80s and 90s and 70s when when you started out outside of freedom like mm-hmm. did they actually enjoy the job or were they doing it for money like yes. what, how did they kind I, of pitch it I, I, I i'm glad you asked that question okay because i absolutely love the job okay what i didn't love was some things about the job okay if if I had a, a bladder that's bursting through my body, okay, and I'm stuck in traffic, okay, I go, oh my God, I I can't park anywhere, I can't do anything, I I got I gotta I gotta go to the toilet, okay, okay. That, by that, the way, it's an Uber and Lyft driver problem. By the way, they complain about that all the it time. Is, it it well, it, this is an ongoing problem from God knows how when, when it started. I mean, you know. Uh, I, I would uh, when I was in real world on MTT on MTV, okay, in 1992. That's that's the line I gave that they that they uh, put on the air. Okay, I spoke. I I, I was on Real World, and, and they 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 uh, video videoed me for an hour and a half, and they used that one line, okay, about going to the bathroom, okay. Um, yeah, you're or part of TV history, sp- the first episode of Real World, exactly. Yeah, I know. I, that's right. Uh, um, and uh, the other time would be as if my stomach is growling, you know, saying, Abe, you're hungry. You got to get out of this car and get something to eat, you know. Well, in later years, I started bringing jars of peanut butter with me, okay, so that when I get to that, I could at least take a spoonful of peanut butter until I could, you know, get a decent meal, Okay. All right. Other than that, I absolutely love the job. I love the job. I love be picking up strange people and seeing and and talking to them. Okay. Uh, I mean, I had you, you know. It did, well, go ahead. I was just going to say because, like Carolyn, in terms of the people you knew, is this kind of similar to what Abe is saying? Is that why they drove, or how? What how did um, they describe it to you? Well, the, the main let complaint me, was always trapped. Abe, <laughs> not to sound like Kamala Harris, you, but, but I'm speaking. I know, I know, I know. But you the traffic, speak a lot. the traffic, <laughs> the traffic. I just was want to say, made. okay, now, okay, I'll ahead, just be Carolyn. quiet. Go ahead, I, I just, I forgot the question already. Um, uh, Why go, did go ahead, people Carolyn. drive in olden times? Exactly. What so was I it think that attracted it, them I, to I, the industry? Exactly. So I think Abe, it was, I, it was I the wanted, autonomy. Exactly. It was the autonomy. You could, you know, work your ass off for 10 months a year, working 16-hour days, six and seven hours a week, and you could take three months off and go travel around Europe if you felt like doing that. There is no other job in this world that allows you to behave like that, none. Um, And the complaints were always traffic and anything to do with the TLC was just horrifying to anybody who was an owner driver of an Italian taxi cab. And I also think one thing that people loved was interacting with the passengers, which doesn't happen anymore, whether you're in an Uber or a yellow cab, because everybody's on the cell phone all the time. Um, And just getting back to the immigrants for one more thing, immigrants are risk takers by their very nature. You know, they picked up with, from where they were, they left everything behind, and they don't really know what they're facing in this new country they're going to, and yet they go. So I think they don't really worry that much about who they're going to pick up and that they don't know where they're going, because I think their nature is, very nature of an immigrant is that they're more, they're not averse to risk-taking. That's why they're here. And luckily for us, you know, they are here and they're willing to buy it. Buy the New York is the capital tax. of immigrants, exactly. Yeah. I would like to I would like to read to you right now two the first two paragraphs of my book Let's Go for a Ride. Okay. Which people I wish they would buy the book, okay, 
he, he, you can you can see it on L, N, NYC Taxi News the front page. There are links to my book. <clears throat> but I want to read this first paragraph. Abe Middleman, also known as Abe, was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. After graduating high school with excellent grades, rather than continuing with continuing with a formal education, he decided he had enough school. Abe took the first job working as a bag teller. Two years later, he was drafted into the U.S. Army. He did his best to avoid this unsuccessfully. <clears throat> um, this was during the Vietnam War. Being in the U.S. Army and Vietnam were the last places he wanted to wind up. What A.B. really wanted was a way to live to to live free with no commitments. When he was discharged from the military service, all he wanted was a job with no boss, the ability to work when he wanted and not work when he didn't feel like it. He could thank his military stint for giving him the idea that would support his needs for the next 50 years. The last job he had in the U.S. Army was being a chauffeur for his company commander. This led A.B. to find what he wanted. A.B. found what he wanted by owning a New York City taxi. That's a beautiful. And, uh, and uh, this is what I would add, listening to what both of you are saying. I think there's one element where people uh, in the yellow cab industry – they get kind of like well, Uber and Lyft, those SOVs, they came in. They, and there's a lot of truths in terms of like kind of massaging the laws and everything, but there's also sometimes things to learn from Uber and Lyft. And I think one thing, and you can see older videos of this, especially with, on Nitra, where there was a lot of – what you guys are speaking about as you were owners of medallions and you had that freedom because you owned the medallion. Right. But I think what happened is the way drivers were treated by garages that own many medallions wasn't the greatest. I think that is a reflection Stop. of the yellow cab. Okay. Yeah, I just, I'd like to say something about that because the experiences that my husband had, um, he owned a radio in a black car group. He was a cooperator when the TLC was still enforcing the rules that black car drivers had to be owners within a cooperative system. Um, he leased from an individual. He owned his own medallion, and he worked for a yellow taxi garage several times during his driver's driving career. Um, at the end of his driving career, he went back to the taxi garage and service on 21st Street and worked for them. He never felt he was abused by the garages. He always made his way and didn't have problems dealing with garages. I mean, yeah, he did pay dispatchers $5 or whatever, but then he got an air-conditioned, nice, clean cab that worked, and he got out fast from the garage. So to him, it was worth it to pay the $5. Never had any problem. So, okay, let, know, me, in, let me in, jump in. Any, in any of these ways of working, he never had any problem. I agree with all, I, I agree with what you're saying, and I just want to say this: it it wasn't the fact that I owned the medallion that made me like the business. It was the 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 uh, time that I worked for the garages and saw what it was all about that made me want to own a medallion. Okay, that's a beautiful. Because, actually, so because, uh, so, yes. I, I knew Go I ahead, liked sorry, the I didn't job. Mean to interrupt that. Okay, the 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 the, 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 the uh, uh, the fleet owners didn't give me any problem because I was a good worker. Okay, I brought in the money. All right, you know. The, I remember one guy go coming into the fleet saying, "Gee, it's business. It's it's, uh, it's lousy out there. There's nobody." And I'm thinking to myself, "What is he nuts?" You know, he did. This guy was riding around stealing all the money. Okay, not putting on the meter. Okay. Right. That that that's what that's that's what led to the um, leasing of the car. The leasing system. Yeah. Right. So let me you know because I, I'll, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Do that. Yeah, I want to get to, there's so many knowledge yeah. that you have, but I'll 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 say a few things. So one thing is that with the yellow cab industry, speaking about the modern times, right now, if you survey Uber and Lyft drivers, they feel like they are hostage. Many of them, not all of them, feel like they are hostage to Uber and Lyft because they can be deactivated. You know, like they basically they can be kicked out. I personally know drivers who have been, de they've had a 
10,000 trips, 5.0 score, and then, you know, uh, they, like they didn't know, like there might have been an animal and they didn't know it was a service animal. And they, you know, again, over 10,000 trips, they've been perfect. And then obviously they shouldn't have done that. But if, you know, it's, there's like no hearing. It's like they're deactivated. We, you know, you're done. You know, one mistake and uh, 10,000 trips, well, you're done. It's over. And well, so I think well, what the I, yellow cab industry should do is say, guys, like if I was a marketer for the yellow cab industry, is like, are you sick and tired of being at the whim of an algorithm? Buy a medallion. And by the way, you can buy them on the cheap. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you're absolutely right. They they should stop doing what they're doing and buy a medallion, okay? You know, but that's not being that's you, not being market. Uh, the they, or or don't the, even don't 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 even buy a medallion. Go go to a fleet garage and and drive a yellow cab uh, for for a week or two and and see what it's like, okay? Because nobody I think, nobody in you're going to get the money you deserve, okay? I think I. Th- I think well. I think there's one thing that both of you said is why do people love this industry, especially why they bought a medallion, autonomy. And if you think about autonomy, right, a part of the attraction, a part of the autonomy is owning the asset that allows you autonomy. If you're still renting from a, gar- so I'll give you an example. I spoke to people. Um, I've spoken to someone who owns a lot of medallions right now, and. He basically, his opinion of things were that he doesn't think, he said, he basically implied that most medallions should be owned by people first for the recovery to start happening. A second thing also is these leasing rates. Right now, the leasing rates are 900 to 1,000. Now, a lot of garages are going to kill me for saying this, right? You got 4,000 medallions on the sideline. Drop the leasing rates to drive occupancy to 100%. Once occupancy is at 100%, then the market will take care of the what the market rate of leasing. They're trying to hold on to the right now. They're trying to hold on to thousand dollars or nine hundred dollars. And yes, no one likes to take a price cut, but take a price cut to drive occupancy. Nine hundred dollars is not a lot of money, okay? Because when you, especially since the last fare increase, okay? Because because. Um, Easily, you would make that $900 in two or three, two or three days, okay? And then you'd have the rest of the week to put money well, in Well, let's get into, let's get into okay. technicals. Right now, if someone owns a medallion, how much is the garage paying them a month? I, I know the answer. It's like $300 a month, about. Um, or the garage, two, the garage three, isn't two. paying them. You're, they're paying the garage. Exactly. So what I'm saying is that uh, right now, if the market leasing rates, and it, this is information you guys know, but for the audience, right now to lease a, a, meda- a medallion and a car 24-7 is between 900 to $1,100. That's 24-7. Um, and really the shift thing has kind of died, but it's still there, but basically most people rent it 24-7. Uh, okay. In my opinion, what needs to happen is that the the rate needs to be adjusted till uh, this business, because I have experience running a fleet, this business, running a garage, medallion business, everything is about occupancy, occupancy, occupancy. It's like running a hotel. It's like running a real estate development. If you are earning zero on 4000 right, what's a good uh, – I'll put it this way. A way to attract a yellow cab driver is saying, listen – for three months, you can rent my medallion at $700, but you know you don't think they'll switch if you can offer them a really good price. Get it occupied. They'll see the money. They see the money they earn, and if the money's there, you don't think they're going to stick around and say, "Okay, that was a three-month promotional rate. Now we're going to adjust based on what the market is." And that's what needs to happen right now. What happened with a lot of and there's a lot of good guys in the yellow cab industry. A thing that's not being reported is a lot of the business people, the innovators of the yellow cab industry. They're they kind of are they disappeared. Because, you know, so many things happen with Uber and Lyft. It's been a de- it seems like Uber and Lyft's a new thing, but it's, it's been more than a decade now since the disruption. And so this, it's kind of been, the yellow cab industry has been hollowed out. But now, let's give Marvel Gate credit where credit is due. They open, they're doing small things. They opened that taxi lounge. Yes, I know it's not like an end-all, be-all, right? But okay, now a yellow cab driver, actually, in fact, any TLC driver has a place to rest, right? You... 
educate them about, okay, if you want to buy a medallion, they're holding info sessions there. If you want to buy a medallion, these are the financing, uh, financing rates. These are, this is how you buy it. Because you have to remember when a new immigrant comes to the country and they're like, you know what, I want to buy a medallion. The second question you have to ask is, well, who do I buy it from? How much does it cost? Am I going to get screwed? I read about people getting screwed. I read about someone uh, losing a lot of money. I don't want to be that guy. So people have to re-educate these guys. But what the yellow cab industry needs to make a couple of pitches, and, I'm, and I know a lot of people are trying that. They need to make a pitch that why should you drive yellow? versus Uber and Lyft versus the alternative. So one obvious pitch, will Uber and Lyft have a wait list. So that's an obvious pitch. So you can get those guys. But <laughs> you, let, so listen, if you want to know what Yellow Cab has to do. If you want to know where to, if you want to know where to buy a medallion, okay, let me bring up the front page of my uh, NYC Taxi News uh, somewhere over here. <laughs> uh, well, Richard we, Chipman of what Richard Chipman of Westway Medallions is a very honest person, and 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 I would recommend that you go to him. A hundred percent. Richard is great. Richard is great. Yeah. Uh, but I guess what I'm saying is that okay, those are the names, which is a hundred percent. Westway is a, a great broker, very trustable, been in the business a long time. But even beyond that, I should say, is that w instead of where, like, why should you buy a medallion? You, you know, like because, even before the because where, it, because why? because it, it will set you free. Okay, but That's you expand. Uh, if you're, let's say, a driver's come to you. Let's say you got a medallion. You want to sell to the driver. You're saying it'll, because it'll set you free, and they'll be like, "What do you mean it'll set me free?" You won't have anyone to answer to except yourself. Okay, what is the pr and and then you have to okay. But then they'll say, well, why don't I work for Uber and Lyft? I don't have to pay for $100,000 right now for a medallion. You don't have to pay for 100000 right now because because there is, I think there's financing somewhere. What do you know no, about but I'm that? Saying if that? If that if that driver, I'm, you can get financing. I'm not saying that, but if listen, that driver is Listen, saying, there's $9,000, there's 9,000 9, uh, medallions sitting on the shelf still. Okay. Four thousand. No, no, no. Nine thousand are active. Four thousand are. I'm sorry. Active. I'm sorry. There's four thousand yeah. sitting on the shelf. Yeah. Okay. And and if those cars are active, and if all those cars are making money, your hundred thousand dollar investment is going to skyrocket. No, but 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 uh, that that could be true. But I'm asking a different question. They're saying that right. I can get a if I get an uh, electric vehicle. I can get a TLC plate and earn a similar income to a yellow cab. Why in the world am I going to get a hundred thousand dollar medallion plus a okay. car? Okay, is, you know, is, is it a similar income? According to Commissioner Doe, the Uber drivers, Lyft drivers are averaging gross. I believe he said a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars um, a week. A That's week. correct. That's that's yep. not good. That's listen, before expenses. It, it, that's it, it, before it, it, your tires and your gas and your car washing and your insurance and your repairs. And I mean, that's what terrible. Is the, what that's the not yellow, great. What is what is the yellow cap earnings look like? I don't know, but I just want to say there's one more factor that you're not bringing up, and that's the Taxi and Limousine Commission and the Adams administration. Um, you know, that is a very big factor in all this. And I think without regime change or a total change of thinking in the present regime, none of this works because they're not protecting the franchise that they sold and are selling. And as people default, they're going to be in the selling medallion business again. So they better just straighten up and um, start protecting this asset that they're trying to sell to people. So, you know, maybe it's a good thing that there are some defaults. That that should wake them up. I mean, when, when, when your lawyers are saying things like, because its number of taxis and service at any given point in time has fluctuated, the TLC no longer believes it can meet the goal of requiring medallion owners to continue to provide taxi service, accessible or otherwise. I mean... Don't say gonna, shit like that if you want let, to have let, a successful let, medallion market. You know, just stop. Don't say that. Let, let me let me say this, please. Okay. Um, you, you, why should you buy a medallion? Be, because instead of uh, instead of uh, driving uh, one of those other stupid cars, okay. 
I'll tell you why. Because because in the end, on on one of those uh, the, the TLC plated cars, all you're going to wind up with is a used car. Okay, okay. Plus, you might wind up with a lot of debt uh, on that uh, sixty thousand uh, uh, dollar. But electric when you buy car. a medallion, you okay. still got to buy a car. Okay, but but you but you're making money to pay for that car. Okay. And and you're also you're also you also have a business that you could sell later. So the hundred thousand that you put into it now might be two hundred thousand in five years. So that's where I think what you're okay. saying, Abe, is the right. I think what, what's missing from the the basically I think so. This is where I stand. I do think the yellow cab will recover. And I'll say something even that's maybe controversial. Even if they open up the TLC plates again, I still think the yellow, it's not going to recover as fast or as steep, but there's still be a recovery. Why? A lot of people aren't connecting the dots between the utilization rate where Uber and Lyft have a waiting list now. And, and even, for example, even if we should be absolutely nuts, but let's say they did it. Let's say they say anybody with a car can get a TLC plate it actually wouldn't have that big of an impact now. In congestion terms, it would have a huge impact, but in terms of, um, because Uber and Lyft have a wait list, they can't onboard any more drivers. And for our audience to get more specific, in terms of market share, a lot of people don't realize how dominant Uber and Lyft are. Uber and Lyft combined have an over 80% share of all NYC for hire trips. Think about that. That's effectively a duopoly, and then the incremental ten to fifteen percent are yellow cabs. The, the only, basically. the only, the, the only people making good money from Uber is the people that that, that bought the stock, and people that own the stock. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know the drivers. The drivers are you know they're suckers. They 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 they're working for these people and giving them the money. All well, right. I think. I think. The, I think you so I think see what you're saying right now is a is a very that's the pit saying that listen you're increasing the equity value of these platforms Uber and Lyft buy the medallion so as you build up as you help build up the yellow cab franchise of New York City the iconic NYC taxi industry you benefit from the increasing the equity value of the yellow cap franchise. But there's very few people, there's really good people in the yellow cap industry, but this needs to be pitched to drivers more. And I think podcasts like this, information that you write and Carolyn shares on X and I write about, I think a point of these uh, uh, podcasts is to kind of rile up, you know, rally up people where we have to go, in my opinion, if you're in sales and if you're trying to sell something to someone, it's less about saying Uber and Lyft suck. It's more about yellow cab is great. Does that make sense? Let me say, let me say one more thing. Uh, my medallion was bought in 1977. Okay. Uh, along with another medallion, because uh, we, we had to buy a mini fleet at the time. Okay. The, each medallion went for twenty eight thousand dollars, okay, and 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 it rose. It rose to a hundred thousand. It rose to two hundred thousand. It rose to four hundred thousand. To six hundred thousand. It went all the way up to a million. And there were people that cashed in before before Uber came along. You know, thanks to uh, our friends that said, "I'm going to destroy your industry." And he did. But okay, let me let me ask you. Okay, this. You all think, right. Well, but 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 there is a recovery, as you're saying. That's why. Go ahead. Oh, hundred percent. So uh, that's a, So what I'm saying is that uh, twenty three thousand dollars. Let's say in the nineteen seventies, adjusted for inflation terms. I'm just roughly doing this. Let's say I don't know. That's like a hundred thousand in today's money, right? Let's just say that. I, you know, I'm sure there's a calculator. Uh, you, you, how yeah, much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have I have on my computer the um, uh, uh, the calculator for that. Uh, did you keep okay, so I'm, I'm going to put that it, in. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to. So, what year did you buy the medallion? 1977. Okay, 1977. I have this up. Uh, so you said twenty three thousand. So twenty three thousand is equivalent. 
No, 28,000. 28,000. That's the equivalent to $144,918 in today's money, according to this calculator. I'm sure the calculator will say something similar. So the pitch could be that, guys, think about Marblegate. Marblegate aren't dumb guys, right? Now, okay, no, they didn't predict the pandemic. Who could all of that stuff, right? They're seeing something here. Something's developing, but this needs to be explained to drivers. <laughs> Forget about Wall Street. Let's first explain it to drivers. And so if they, exp if they explain that to drivers, that listen, you can own the franchise. Right now in the medallion You own the stock. Is, you own the stock. The medallion right. is a stock. Yeah. That, that's a great way to pitch it, that you own the stock of – uh, of basically the an unlisted there's 30 you are one of 30 there's only 13,587 of these things right and you are a shareholder yeah. of the icon right. of think of the yellow I mean you don't even have to pitch it of the New York City yellow cab industry and so instead of people in the industry saying that well Uber and Lyft are SOBs and I by the way I agree with you Carolyn that there are regulatory aspects that we have to speak about so the medallion value doesn't get hammered in an unfair way but at the same time I feel like how I always thought about business is pitching optimism rather than pitching like who screwed us and I think everybody understood or most people who are intellectually honest understand what happened over the last decade but now is a new day and now is the time for the yellow cab industry to say the reason our industry is good is we bottomed out and we survived. Think about all right. the other medallions, guys. In in Miami, I don't even think as medallion. Boston medallions, I don't know if there's any value to that. Chicago medallions, Philadelphia medallions, and everybody else basically died. All the other medallions died, but New York survived. Yes, and because so, we were strong. And, and that's why New York is New York. So that should be yeah. the pitch, that that they try to kill us. And I don't even own a medallion, but I like, I like who doesn't like a comeback story? They try to kill us, <laughs> but we survive. <laughs> you know? Like cockroaches. Yeah, and, <laughs> uh, we're, we're cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll never we'll, die. We'll, we're uh, <laughs> caterpillars that will, you know, we'll turn into butterflies, <laughs> maybe. I don't know if cockroaches turn yeah. into butterflies. <laughs> But what, what I'm saying is that, that has to be, <laughs> yeah. yeah that 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 has to be the pitch. Would Uber think about Uber and Lyft have enough of headaches? Right? Think about what's happening in Minneapolis with Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft. This is the moment for the yellow cab industry to say to say, listen, I don't want to talk about those other people. I can tell you why driving yellow is right. Why driving yellow is going to be good in New York City. Here's the earnings. That's what has to be spoken about more. Well, listen. Let's let's let's. Uh, we've been on an hour now. Okay. Let's. Um, you know, I, I don't like to do these uh, podcasts more than an hour because, you know, people people don't stay tuned in. So let Carolyn. You know, she's been listening to us for most of most of the uh, thing. Let let her talk and say. What's oh, I thought I thought I was Carolyn. talking too much. Did yeah. you tell me I was talking too much, Abe? <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, you, you know, we should do a video so we can raise our hand. You know, I mean, yeah. we, Carolyn gets the last word, basically. I, yeah, Carolyn unfortunately, gets I still think the TLC has a lot to do with this, um, and I just I don't feel very confident in what they may or may not do in the future. But perhaps uh, they'll wake up at some point, and you know, and they'll be told New York City, you know. We need more revenue, and we need to sell a few more medallions, but we can't do that unless we have some guarantees in place, you know, that there will be value going into the future um, in these medallions, and we're not just leaving it to chance. Um, you know, one, thing, would, one, thing, one, one thing Uber proved to us is that we do need a lot more vehicles, okay, but not their kind, okay? We need a lot of vehicles that – that that have that have value to them, such as medallion taxis. Okay. Six trips a day per vehicle in New York City. Nobody's going to succeed in a market where there's six trips a day 
it's right. Well, we need more, we need more um, vehicles to, co- to cover the, to cover the people in, in the out, outskirts of the city. You know, uh, high up in the Bronx. You know uh, how. Uh, you know what? You know, I just saw some and, statistics yeah. on po- on population in New York City. The Bronx lost seven yeah. percent of its population. Comparing 2023 to 2020, that's astounding. I don't blame them. And the city, because they, Manhattan that's lost. Because they, that's because they don't Manhattan, want to drive into the city and pay $15 Manhattan, to get there. Manhattan lost 5% of its population. Brooklyn lost 5% of its population. Queens lost 5% of its population. Staten Island is about the same as it was in 2020. Um, we lost almost 500,000 people. So why do we need more cars to schlep people around? Why is that? The people in the outer boroughs own cars if they live in a transportation desert. Then it has to be figured out exactly how many cars we we need where the drivers can still make money. We okay? certainly don't need and, more than we had 10 years uh, ago. Right, and there has 50, to be a cap. Cars. Right. There has to be a <laughs> cap on that on that number that they've calculated. Uh, ask artificial intelligence to how many, because it's, it's for sure that the people... Don't you remember I know. we did that, Abe? And, yeah. and it didn't have an answer. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, I so, think, I think to, 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 on my side, the last thing I'll say, because I know we're, we're over an hour now, is that I think you both of you guys are hitting the nail on the head. I think with the TLC plates, it just should be formulaic. Let's not leave this to qualitative assessments about electric. Just say that there needs to be nine trips per car, and until that number is not reached, not a single plate is going to be issued. Why does it have to be left to opinion? Let's just make the formula so everybody understands that that's what we're solving for, and that's that. It'll just end this chaos that every year, like the Sword of Damocles, like you said, Carolyn, let's just make a formula that says this has to be X amount of trips well, per vehicle, you would, fair formula, and that's it. You would, you would need a functioning city council, for one thing, who doesn't just leave everything up to the TLC. I remember years ago, Mira Zoshi saying to the TLC, to um, excuse me, the city council, you know, that all well, this stuff should just be left up to us. Based, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what she said. You know, you just give us some broad rules and we'll fill in the details. You know, don't worry your pretty little heads about the details. Well, no, no, somebody really has to be looking into this and asking very hard questions, which I have never seen anybody other than maybe Ruben Diaz at times, Ruben Diaz Sr., who used to have fights with Mirazoshi oh. and Bill Hyneton and the people from the TLC. But for the most part, they don't ask them any hard questions. You, you, you so they're know, not accountable. And, 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 and the people that got rid of uh, him shouldn't have gotten rid of him. They should have got rid of themselves. Okay. Because yeah. uh, Diaz was, was, was really on the money with what he was doing. Okay. I wish he would yeah. come back. All right. Okay. Listen, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank my sponsors here, um, Checker Management, Queens Medallion, United Taxi, and Richard Chipman, okay, who uh, uh, will sell you a medallion. Okay, I'll go get one for you. Okay, and MV Brokerage also, okay, we'll, we'll get, a, get a medallion for you. Okay, and, um, and, and, you know, guys, listen to us. We're not giving you bad advice. Okay, we really aren't. Okay, so um, Carolyn, thanks for uh, joining us with uh, and uh, Dowd and and me. I thank myself. Okay, and um, and I'll just and just, I, 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 I just add this: nothing is financial advice. Just so we don't get in trouble. This is just our opinion. <laughs> right. Nothing is should be construed right. as financial advice. <laughs> no, I'm not giving financial advice. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just telling you like it is. Okay. Right. These you are the facts. Nobody, no, right. Nobody has to listen to me. Okay. All right. Okay. We're done. No, this was great, guys. <laughs> thanks a lot. All right. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll be back soon. We'll, we have more to talk about. We do. Okay. We didn't even get near what we wanted to talk about. Or did we? There's always stuff to talk about. So we'll, we'll have one of these soon again. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks for everyone. Thanks everybody for listening. Thanks, guys. We'll, see you, we'll Thank see you again soon. Bye bye. Bye.